Hi, and welcome to section on introducing PowerShell. In this section, we will make our first steps to get familiar with PowerShell. In this section, we are going to look at basic syntax where we get familiar with executing commands, formatting output for viewing on the screen as well as for storing to files. We will mention a few productivity tips and we will customize our command line shell to our preferences. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with basic syntax. In this video, you will get familiar with executing PowerShell commands. In this video, we are going to look at commands in PowerShell and what the different types of commands are. We will look at writing and executing functions and script blocks. And we will have a look at how to use commands together to form pipelines. And finally, we will talk about output redirection. Let's issue a familiar command, dir, which lists the current directory contents. Let's get some information about that command. We see that this command type Let's issue a familiar command, dir, which lists the current directory contents. Let's get some information about that command. We see that the command type is alias, and it refers to another command called getChildItem. Let's get some more information about it. This command type is commandlet. A commandlet is a command that is written in .NET and loaded into the PowerShell runtime. We will learn more about that later. Let's investigate the command types a bit more. If we add the command type parameter, we can filter commands by type. If I hit the tab key, I can have a look into what command types there are. Let's have a look at the type application. These are executables that are in any of the locations of the operating system's path environment variable and are available for execution. Then let's have a look at the external script type. These are PowerShell scripts that are available on the path. This is a small script that I dropped into the path as an example. I can run it. Now let's look more into the get child item command. We can use the get help commandlet and we can get information about the command. If we look at the syntax section, we see that the command has a lot of parameters. Parameters in brackets are optional, and this is true for all of the parameters for this command. There are two ways to pass parameters, either by name or by position. Notice that I can use tab completion to find the parameter that I want. I can pass the filter by name. Or by position. In this case, the parameters have a defined order. Therefore, this will work. This works because the parameters have a defined order. Also, if we use the alias for the command, we can shorten the command even more. And we arrive at a command that we are familiar with from the legacy Windows command prompt. Before we finish off this section on commands, let's get a bit more advanced and look at a trick that can be useful for creating and executing scripts. 
First, let's construct a hash table, which is basically a collection of key value pairs. We now apply something called splatting, where we pass the variable p as a collection of parameters for the command. This is what the at symbol instead of the normal dollar symbol is for. This will be equal to writing this. Now let's move on to functions. If we again use the get command commandlet, we can see that there are a command type called function. Let's construct a simple function. And we can execute it. And we see that it prints a greeting to the command. Retake from 23. Let's construct a simple function. This function is now available as a command. And we can execute it and see that it prints hello from F1 to the standard output. Functions have an implicit variable args, which captures the arguments passed to the function. It will capture all the arguments passed. But be careful not to add commas between the parameters. This will be interpreted as a single argument, which is an array. PowerShell does not know how to print the contents of an array. We can use named parameters instead of using the implicit args variable. Here we use string expansion to calculate the result. Now let's look at return values from functions. First, let's, let's make sure that we print some information to the console. And then let's compute the result. And then finish the function block. Now this time, the only thing that we get in the console output is the message and not the computed result. Now this time, we get both what we printed to the console and the return value from the function. Now let's capture the result of the function in a variable. This time, we only get one line in the console output, and that's the first message. The output has, has now been captured in the variable. The return value of a function is constructed from the result of all expressions inside the function that are not captured in a variable. In our example, the right host is a statement with no return value, but the $a plus $b is an expression that is not assigned or redirected anywhere. We can even have more expressions inside the same function. So let's try something else. First, let's do a subtraction. Then we write to the console host. And then we do the addition. 
and we finish the script block. Now if we run our new function, we get only one message to the console host. But if we look at the result variable, we see that it now yields two results. If we do a little bit of introspection, we see that we now get an array. The next thing that we will look at is the function's cousin, the script block. Defining a script block is similar to defining a function, but without the function keyword. It has no name, and it will not be part of the scope, so we have to assign it to a variable. We execute it by using the ampersand operator. But it did not yield any result. That's because the variables a and b are free variables, not bound to any values. In a typical usage scenario, the variables of the script block are bound from the surrounding scope. So if you take care to define the values and then execute the block, we get a result. We will see practical uses of script blocks when we talk about pipelines. Now let's move on to pipelines. As we have seen, functions can return an array of results. This is also true for commandlets. We can use pipelines to efficiently work on these arrays by filtering, sorting, and transforming the results. Let's go back to the getChildItem commandlet. We can use the getMember commandlet to do introspection. We now see that we have an object of type fileInfo. We can pass the results of the get child uh, item commandlet directly to the sort object commandlet using the pipe operator. And we can have it sorted by the property last write time. With the where object, we can filter the results. Notice that we are basically passing in uh, to the commandlet a script block. The script block has a free variable dollar underscore, which will be bound to each object passed in the pipeline. So in this case, we use regular expression to match the name of the directory entry. So this would be equivalent. We define a script block. And we pass the script block to the where object. We can also transform the results using the for each object commandlet. Also, note that we have the select object command available that will do the same transformation. Then we can combine filtering, sorting, and transforming. Now let's talk a little bit about redirection. Instead of having the results displayed in the console, 
we can redirect the commandlet output to a file using the redirection operator. This will create a new file called results.txt or overwrite it if it already exists. We can also append to an existing file instead of overwriting. We can prove this by getting the contents of the file. If we need more control, we can use outfile commandlet. For instance, if we want to set the character encoding. If we need more control, we can use the outfile commandlet, for instance, for setting the character encoding. In fact, PowerShell has six output streams that we can write to. Success, error, warning, verbose, debug, or information. For convenience, there are commandlets for writing to the different streams. For instance, debug. However, the debug stream is not sent to the console by default, so we must switch it on. To summarize the redirection, there are six streams that you can redirect to. You can write directly to them using the write commandlets, and you can switch output to console from each stream on and off by using the preference variables. For the error stream, you set the error action preference. For the warning stream, you set the warning preference, and so on. In this video, we had a look at the basics around commands, functions, script blocks, and pipelines. These are fundamental building blocks for writing and running scripts.